This is the Skeptic's Guide to Wellness. Hi! I'm guessing you're Griffin. I am. I'm Jacqueline. Nice to meet you, Jacqueline. Nice Welcome. to meet you. Welcome to the Green Man. Am I going to be able to learn anything? You know you actually might have skill inside you already. And that was something I wanted to ask you. Is this something that you have to be born with in order to be able to do? I think anybody can do it. Okay. It's, it's really something that people can learn to some degree, but if you want to be an artist in it, then, oh. then you've got to have a, a okay. predisposition. So how do I determine if I have this predisposition? Listen to your spirit and see if it attracts you. I don't know what that means. Have you ever been to a concert and been moved to the core where it enriches your life? Yeah. Or you look at the news and you see people suffering mm -hmm. and, and you feel empathy and you feel moved. Right. Or go to a museum and you see something that's ancient and, and, and you're like, it opens your universe. That's basically what, what witchcraft is for me. It's like as you grow up, the more you perceive, the bigger the universe gets. With witchcraft, it's becoming more sensitive to that awakening perception. But the difference, I feel like, is that there is a supernatural element. Yeah, I guess. I feel like I relate on almost everything that you said until right. we get to the point where, where magic is involved. I, I guess he can define it as magic if he wants to. I feel like that's something that maybe people centuries ago might have described as magic because they didn't understand the science behind it. I, I certainly never thought of it like that before. So what about doctors that prescribe drugs for patients? Do you view that as a form of witchcraft? No, because they're looking at the chemistry of it. They're not trying to change the spirit of the person. Mm -hmm. They're trying to medicate the symptom. What about a therapist? To me, therapist is what you have if you don't have mates. <laughs> okay, well then let's go Let's go one step further down. What if you have a friend that, that talks you through a difficult time in your life and they make you feel better? No, I think that's a good friend. If they, in the process of doing that, decided okay. to bring a certain color candle into being and they brought some other elements and they said, work with the spirit of these things in order to nurture and support a change in you. I've had a friend that was going through a hard time and I brought her a bunch of things to cheer her up. Is that witchcraft? Yeah, I would say in okay. essence it is. <laughs> I'm trying to find where the line is. In essence, that would okay. be witchcraft because now you're working with the spirit of things okay. around in order to bring about a change in, in a person's okay. health and well-being. So aromatherapy candles, witchcraft, Yay. awesome. What they're basically doing when they craft spells or whenever they give you an object that's supposed to have a certain meaning is that they're putting their intentions into something. And there's nothing really wrong with that, but they're not claiming that it has some kind of medical effect. What they call magic, I call good intentions. And obviously there's nothing wrong with good intentions. We've got some Jesuses yeah. and Marys going on over here. A lot of people who come into our community are recovering Christians. Recovering Christians? Yeah, they've, they've That's got, like me. One of my biggest problems here is really presenting Christ as a valid witchcraft foundation. So be you can be both a Christian and a witch. I don't want to shut them out, I want to include them. But a lot of them probably aren't comfortable including you. A lot of them would have a big issue with okay. me, but when they're dead, they're a lot more compliant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in God's controlling, I believe in God's as an expression of harmony and order in the world. How many gods do you believe in? Uh, how many gods uh, are there in the cosmos? I mean... None, I don't think. Uh, Zero. Okay, well again, terminology. <laughs> it's all about language, right? Okay. You think about there is uh, paternal love, erotic love, love of country, love of the land. And if you think that all of these expressions of love as an identity unify under a term, I call it God. God is a term that I use to express the harmony and union of all of these expressions of love. But I just appreciate them for what they are and I don't feel the need to ascribe some kind of higher level of consciousness. Oh, and I don't see my gods as being in authority. I see them as family. We talk together, we, we get co-creative together. Well, talk, people say I they talk. talk to God all the time. Oh yeah, but with me, they talk back. <laughs> can I can I hear? No. Can I listen? No, okay, no. damn. At one point he started talking about how there are all of these different gods. For example, if you go out into the forest and you observe the beauty of the forest, that is because of the forest god. What I couldn't get around is why can't it just be a beautiful forest and why isn't that enough? Not only does he believe in these multiple gods, but he somehow is in direct communication with them. It's not a path that you can dissect scientifically, it's a path that you have to participate in. It's just one of those things. One of those things. Griffin in particular seemed to understand that a lot of people probably perceive what he does is out there. But the way that he explained it, that it, he just said it was a very positive thing, that he's clearly proud of what it is that they do. 